I got a great video for you guys because this is a good one where I dive deep into the knowledge aspect of the game and I dive deep into my strategies and my thought process in these hands. So it's going to be a really good tournament. This one was going to be a $110 buy-in at my local casino. And I hope you guys are ready. Let's jump right into the action. Our first hand, we look down at King 10 of clubs. Four players limp to me on the button. I make the calls, small blind calls, and big blind checks it. We're going seven players to a flop. That brings top pair for us. And it's surprisingly checked all the way around to me. Now there are some straight draws and some flush draws here. Everybody did limp in, so I don't think anyone has a premium here unless they have something like pocket fives, maybe something like king jack or king queen. Regardless, when it's checked to me, I'm gonna lead here. So I decide to lead with 1500. Small blind under the gun and plus two make the call, which is actually pretty surprising to me. I wasn't expecting three players to come along after they all just checked it down to me. Now I got my guard up. I have a feeling someone may be slow playing it, maybe a set of fives. So we're going four ways to a turn that comes to a nine is spade. And once again, it's checked all the way around to me. This is very odd. They all check to me and then I bet, then three other people call and they all check it to me again all the turn. Very odd, I'm not sure what's going on here, um, but I'm gonna check it back just to have some pot control here. I don't wanna blow up the pot if somebody's slow playing here. The river comes a nine of heart. This time it's checked to plus two who leads with 6,000. Now this ain't a very aggressive bet here. Um, the pot was 8,100 before he led. Now it's 14,100. If I make the call, it's given me about three to one pot odds after my call. So that means I need to be right about 30% of the time I need to have the best hand here. So with that being said, I got top pair. And again, um, you know, they've been playing pretty passively here. If someone had it set here, I definitely think they were leading with more than 6,000. And there's also a lot of hands they could be trying to steal this with, like a missed flush draw, a missed straight draw, weak pair, like a queen or a five or something like that. So with that being said, I'm getting the right odds here and I'd only need to be right 30% of the time for this to be a profitable call. With top pair, I'm not gonna go anywhere. And the other players fold, so it's just me and plus two. And he ends up showing us ace five suited uh, with a miss spade draw and a pair of fives. He tells me, nice call. He knows he's beat. He was just trying to steal it. I show my king and we take down the pot. We got a pretty good sized pot here early in the tournament. So we're off to a great start. Our next playable hand, we wake up with the boys. Under the gun folds it to us. We're in the plus one position and I decide to raise it up 3X the blind, which is 1800. Low Jack decides to make the call. And then when it gets to the button, he does exactly what I want. And he goes all in for 12,300 in total. When it gets back around to me, I decide to make a smooth call, hoping that the low jack will come along, but he unfortunately makes the fold, so we're heads up to a run out, and our opponent shows us pocket queens, an absolutely sick cooler, and we are way ahead here. I think it's about 80% to 20% equity here. And we take it down, we held our aces, and we get another good size pot here with 27, almost 28,000 in chips. So we are in pretty good shape so far. We're running pretty good and making some good plays. So let's keep the momentum going. Our next playable hand, plus one, button, small blind, all limp it to me in the big blind. I look down at five, seven suited and decide to check it 
There's no reason to raise here. So we're gonna go five ways to a flop. The flop brings us middle pair and with this many people in the pot, someone could definitely have an eight here. So I'm gonna go with the passive route here and just check it down, see what happens. If someone has an eight, they're definitely gonna bet this with some um, straight draws and flush draw potential here. So I expect any eight to bet here, but it fortunately checks all the way around and we get to see a free turn card, which brings out a six of spade, which is great for me. That brings me a straight draw, a open-ended straight draw, I should say. And I also, again, have a pair here. So I'm feeling more comfortable now that uh, we're connected with this board even more. So once it's checked to me, I decide to lead out with 2,400. It's folded to the button who is the only caller the king of diamond comes on the river i don't really see any reason to bet in the spot so i go ahead and check it and my opponent checks it back he shows us four three of spades so he also had a missed uh, straight draw with a missed flush draw and we're gonna take it down with a pair of fives and my opponent tells me to tell the GoPro and my audience that I got lucky here that he missed. Tell your GoPro you got lucky as shit. <laughs> I never hit a freaking draw. Draw. I got a five. And I put in our hands in the solver along with the board up until the turn. And I run a calculation to see exactly how lucky I was. And as you guys can see, I had 63, almost 64% equity here. My opponent only having about 36% equity, so it doesn't really make sense when he says that I got lucky here. No, I got exactly what is to be expected here for my particular hand and his particular hand. I had his dominated, and I was on the right side of the coin here. So no, I didn't get lucky. If your card came, it would have been unlucky. So we're going to take down another pretty good pot here. Now let's move on to the next hand. Our next playable hand, we get dealt ace king off suit in the small blind. Five players limp it to me and with this much money in the pot, I'm definitely gonna raise it up here and I'm not gonna go light. There's five people in here and there's also, or five limpers in here and there's also the big blind next to act. So I'm definitely going to get very aggressive here, and I raise to 12000 in total. I'm trying to either take the pot down now with all this dead money, or try to isolate one or two players. And I'm honestly fine with either one. So, when I raise it up to 12000 it's folded to the plus two, who is the only caller. Now, I, this was the only player I was actually worried about because he he's a player that's newer and it looked like he wanted to raise originally because he threw out a 5,000 chip. So I wasn't exactly sure if he was just trying to call or raise. He's actually a deaf player. And so with that being said, there was a lot of uh, misunderstanding going around with him being new and not sure if he meant to raise or just limp in. But uh, with the one chip rule, it was enforced that, you know, it is just a call. So this was a play that I wasn't sure where he exactly was, if he had a very strong holding or if he just had a mediocre hand where he was just trying to limp in. But I do have a premium. So at the end of the day, I'm okay with him calling here. And the flop comes out amazing for me with a top pair, top kicker. It's a pretty dry board other than a flush draw out here. Um, and I do block pocket aces. So with that being said, I'm just going to get it all in. I don't have much behind. And this player uh, also don't have much behind. So... I put my opponent all in for 16500 We got him covered. It's about a half pot bet. And he makes the call with ace-10 offsuit. So he's got second pair. Opponent shows ace-10. No queen. No 10. No queen. Okay, we got him. Opponent shows ace-10 offsuit. He got the button too. It's a clean run out for us, and we are going to take another massive pot down 
we are just on a run here and we just keep chipping up everything's going well for us let's try to keep the momentum going let's get it in our next playable hand we get dealt jack 10 offsuit and the big blind under the gun and cut off both limp it to me small blind folds and i decide to check it down it's three ways to a flop that brings us top to pair now there is some flush draws out there and a straight draw so it's a pretty wet board but i'm confident with my hand with top two here so i decide to lead with seven thousand which is about 78 percent of the pot under the gun calls and cut off folds which means we're at a 23,000 chip pot and we are heads up to a turn that brings out the three of heart my opponent is not always going to have the flush right here sometimes he's going to be on the straight draw sometimes he's going to have just two overs or a pair here or something mediocre so with that being said i'm still pretty confident with my hand and that's why i decided to lead with 12,000, which is about 52 percent of the pot and as soon as i lead my opponent snap shoves all in for 48,000 total chips. Now, this definitely, definitely puts me into the tank here. I mean, I've looked at back at the film and I was in the tank for almost four minutes. I mean, I had a very big decision here. Um, this is gonna take most of my chips here if I call and lose. It's 36,000 for me to call. I will win 119,000 if I do happen to win, but if I lose, I'm left with 12,000 after the call, of course. So it's a very big decision here, and I'm starting to think of all the possible outcomes here. You know, what, what's in my opponent's range and what he could be doing this with. And my thoughts are villain limped this pot. So there are hands that I automatically remove from this range like Ace King of Hearts, Ace Queen of Hearts, King Queen of Hearts, Pocket Jacks, Pocket Tens. And when my opponent shoves on the turn, I remove all of the nutted and second and third nutted hands uh, like the Ace X of Hearts, King X of Hearts, Queen X of Hearts, giving them uh, or giving him the uh, nut flush or second nut flush or third nut flush. And the reason why I do that is because any nutted hand is likely just going to call here and not shove. They want to extract more value, so they're not wanting to scare me away. They're just going to smooth call it. So hands that I have in his range that could actually be doing this with that beat me are pocket sevens. 9-8 suited for a straight king queen offsuit hands with a heart in his hand um offsuit ace of heart hands king of heart with like a jack also queen of heart with like a jack hands like queen of heart with a nine uh, offsuit here for a gut shot straight and with that range i put on put him on i dominate him about 85 percent of the time when i put this into the the equ equity calculator also i pretty much priced myself in here so if you do the math that's about 30 percent of the time that i need to be winning this here to be profitable so on top of all of that i have a very very good read on him because during this entire four minute tank I was saying very specific things to try to get my opponent to think and try to put a lot of pressure on my opponent. I would say things like, if you had a flush here, why would you be shoving all in? Wouldn't you just be calling here to get more value? And that's going to make him start thinking. And I also had the dealer count out all of his chips and I'm counting my chips and I'm putting... The, the calling chips in front of my stack and seeing how much I got left. So when he sees me doing all of this, it's going to get into his mind and let him know that I'm really, really thinking about calling. This way, if he's bluffing, I can actually get a read on him. He is likely to be under pressure and be nervous at this point and uh, likely to give me some kind of tell. And I'm also asking him questions like, 
how do you feel about that bet you just made? Asking very, very specific questions to get him thinking and put him under a ton of pressure. After doing all of this and after for tanking, I purposely tank for a while, like I said, almost four minutes. And I purposely do this because the longer I take, the more pressure that's going to be on him. And at the very last moment, I finally got a read on him, which set my call in stone. And that's when I decided to call. My opponent showed his king-queen offsuit with the queen of heart in his hand. I read it like a book and I was right on my read. So you guys can check out the original video to see exactly how it all played out. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Yes. Oh my god, the fucking suck out. I only had one move though. The fucking I need, suck I need, I out. I want to do the call. I feel like, come on, if I, if I need the action here. Uh, so fucking I need to do suck out, man. Uh, I had a feeling you I, I had a feeling you was on a draw. Right? Yeah, uh, and then I was going to uh, okay. Good call. Good call. Good call. Nah, I put him on two pairs of set, pair of snaps all day. But. At the end of the day, I'm very, very happy with my decision. Like I said, I was way ahead of him. And if we ran that, ran that same scenario a hundred times, I would call every single time. It was just very unlucky for us and very unfortunate, that variance. And we're going to have to try to run it up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, what you think about this particular hand. If I played it right, if I could have played it better. What do you guys think? All right, it's time to make a comeback. We are dealt ace queen offsuit in the small blind. The blinds are 1,000, 2,000, and I only got about six and a half big blinds. Plus one opens to 5,000 and it's folded around to me. So with only six and a half big blinds, I got to go all in with a premium hand like this. Hopefully he's got something where I am dominating him if he makes the call. And it's folded around to him and he makes the call. So we're heads up to a run out. Check out the original video so you can see exactly how it all plays out. Uh, what you got? Queen 10 of heart versus queen. Give me a comeback. Give me a comeback. It's a good flop. There we go. No, he needs a jack. Jack, yeah. Nice and fun That's what I needed. <laughs> it's gonna be a hell of a comeback. <laughs> gonna need a couple more of those. I'm exactly one orbit later and I'm in the small blind under the gun, hijack and cut off all limp in. So I decided to make the call with Jack Seven off. There's a lot of money in the pot and I think this is a playable hand with only 1500 a call and that much money in the pot. Big blind thankfully checks and we are going five ways to a flop. It brings me top pair and with this many people in the pot, I'm gonna decide to check it and see what everybody else does. And it's surprisingly checked all the way around. The turn comes out of two of heart and with top pair here and everybody checking on the flop, I'm going to lead this time with 7,000, which is about 39% of the pot. Hijack is the only caller and we are heads up to a river that brings a king of diamond. With just a weak pair here, I'm going to decide to play this passively here. I got a very short stack and I don't want to bloat this pot up. So I decide to check it and my opponent checks it back. We show our jack and we take it down a decent sized pot, hoping to make a comeback after break. All right, nine players left. I got about 60. Actually, I got exactly 60,000 in chips. The next blinds will be 4,000, 8,000, 8,000, which leaves me about seven and a half big blinds. So we definitely need a double up. Hopefully we can get that and we'll have to get a double up. We'll have more than an average chip stack. So we'll see how it goes. All right, breaks up and plus two and low jack both limp to me. I check it in the big blind with only queen seven off suit. I don't see any point in raising here. And the flop comes out an amazing two pair for me. Absolutely hammered this flop and it's what I love to see. And with me first to act, I'm going to decide to lead with 20,000. That's about 55% of the pot. 
I could definitely just shove it all in here, but I want to try to extract as much value as possible for any weak pairs, like a pair of king or a pair of queens. I don't definitely don't want to scare anyone away if they just have a queen or a weak king. So with that being said, I just go half pot here and plus two is the only caller. So our heads up to a turn that brings out a three of heart, which is essentially a blank. I only got 20,000 left, so I'm just gonna shove it all in. My opponent snap calls. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I need a jack, dude. No, you don't. Oh, oh my god. Come on, baby. That's the you second suck to, out, dude. man. God, that is I should have shoved on a five when you called shove on a five. I couldn't have seen that. I think that came his face. Oh. That's the second suck out, man. Yeah. I wouldn't, I don't know. I mean, it, it's- Drawing it's, two outs. It's kind of, it, it's kind of <laughs> well, a suck out, but I'm ahead pre-flop though. Yeah. All right, there you guys have it. We lost again. Unfortunately, variance got us again on two different occasions on this particular session, but overall we are on a massive downswing. I'm actually in the negative $458 since I started this bankroll challenge and it's not looking too good for us. I got about 53 hours or so logged so far and the goal was 125 hours. So we got about 75 hours left, but I will say um, I have mainly been focusing on tournaments and with tournaments, there's a lot of swings and a lot of down swings and variants involved. So it's really to be expected with how many tournaments I've been playing, but all I need is like one or good two, one or two good tournaments to cash in and I can definitely reach my goal. So that's what we're going to try to do in these next couple of vlogs is we're going to try to run it up. I'm not giving up here. We still got some time and I'm confident in my skills as you guys have seen in this particular video. Um, I'm getting a lot better. I've been studying a lot and been mastering my craft. So um, I definitely, definitely think we still have a chance to reach our goal. So we just got to keep at it and keep pushing. So let's get it. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you like the analysis and the hand histories that I've been providing. Or if you think I should shorten it up. That one hand uh, analysis was like 7 minutes. Maybe that's too long. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And we'll see you guys on the next one.